Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm, my picture is showing because <clears throat> I'm on my phone um, and I was having some trouble with the actual the video, but I hope you can all hear my, hear my voice. Uh, my name is Alphonse Smith and I am the Executive Director of the Arts Council of New Orleans. And, uh, you know, at, at the beginning of this crisis, we, Nick Stillman of Prospect New Orleans recommended <clears throat> that uh, we work with our CPA, um, Haimo and Reddy, um, to answer questions uh, that so many had about uh, the Paycheck Protection Plan, uh, particularly for, for, for nonprofits. And so that, that was an idea that Nick put out there and we agreed and we hosted a, a pretty, pretty informative talk <clears throat> uh, in session uh, with Aaron Reddy, who's gonna present today, uh, just about the Paycheck Protection Plan uh, application. Uh, more recently, uh, Shana Griffin and Bob Sneed with the Creative Response Network um, reached out and said, hey, this would be great if we did this for individual artists as well. And so it's sort of like a, the moment. So we asked uh, Aaron uh, if he would uh, join us again just to answer questions, paycheck protection questions um, for individual artists. Uh, before, I, before I move forward with how we're going to conduct the meeting, I just want to open it up to, to Shana to, to say a few words. Well, thanks, Alphonse. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, we are very excited to have all of you here to discuss the various ways in which independent contractors, um, self-employed individuals, gig workers can also um, apply for the payroll protection um, plan, the PPP funding, um, as self-employed folks. Um, again, my name is Shana Griffin. I'm the Associate Director of Antenna. I'm also the founder of a feminist-based um, art and research and activist initiative called Punctuate. And I will be sharing, um, in addition with Erin, um, some insights on ways in which um, self-employed people can benefit and apply for the PPP funding. Um, Alphonse, there's a couple of people in the waiting for the waiting room to get in. If you can let them in, that would be great. Yeah, I'm admitting them as, as I see them to the right. They're coming Thanks. in at such a frequent rate. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> with that said, just a couple of ground rules. Thank you, Shana. Uh, just a couple of ground rules for, for the meeting, just to optimize, um, just to optimize uh, the efficiency of the meeting. So Aaron is going to um, sort of give a presentation based upon recently asked, uh, frequently asked questions about the Pay Tech Protection Plan. I'm going to put everyone on mute uh, so that Aaron, uh, the, the speaker view, will, will rest on his box. Um, that way you'll be able to, to see him. <clears throat> Aaron, if, if you can wave just so that folks who don't, who may not, who may not be able to see you or, or know who you are, are you, Aaron? Okay, there yeah, you go. I'm here. I'm there here. you go. This is Aaron Reddy. Uh, so Aaron is just going to, we're going to get right into it because we know we only have so much uh, time and you guys are all busy. We're going to get right into the presentation, but I want to ask that if you have questions, um, to put them in a chat, uh, to put them in a chat box. Uh, send your questions in a chat box. Some may be answered, but if you just have a question about uh, something that you had thought on be before this, or even sort of a follow-up to a question or a piece of information that Aaron presents today, uh, send those, put those over. We're, we'll go back in the end and make some time to, to respond to those. Okay, without further ado, Aaron, take it away. Sure, thanks. Yeah, so like Alphonse said, I think we're going to focus today on uh, the PPP for self-employed sole proprietors. Um, we did a couple other webcasts when this when the law was first passed, um, mainly focusing on nonprofits and small businesses. Um, so if you're interested in those, I have them linked on my website, nolacpa.com. I think Arts Council has them on their website and I think Prospect maybe has it on theirs too, but you can check those out. I mean, we're going to focus today on the, for individual small, uh, sole proprietors, self-employed people. If you have questions and you're with a nonprofit or business, we're going to open up the questions to anyone. Um, but my discussion is going to focus on self-employed people. So, um, so for, 
so the uh, so what we're going to talk about today for sole proprietors and self-employed. So what does that mean? So if you if you receive your income through a 1099, if you're a gig worker, if you're an independent contractor, um, you don't receive income through a W-2. You're you're considered self-employed. Um, if you have no other business partners, um, you're the sole owner or you've received the 1099 independently of anyone else, then you're a sole proprietor. And so if you're a sole proprietor, that means um, you file a Schedule C on your personal income tax return. Um, so, so how does this work? Um, so you need to apply for the PPP. If you fall under that, you need to apply with a bank. Um, or, uh, there's some other other options out there. Um, you know, if you don't take anything else away from this, go ahead and apply as soon as, as soon as we're done here. If you haven't already, um, you know, I would start with your bank. If your bank is not accepting applications, then there's some other options. Um, locally, Fidelity Bank. They're accepting applications from uh, non customers. So you don't have to have an account with Fidelity. Um, so if your bank's not taking them, that's an option. There's a couple other options like Square. So if you, if you have an account with Square, they're, they're the credit card processor. And if you accept payments through them, they, uh, they're taking applications um, Intuit, which is the company that makes QuickBooks. Um, they're taking applications. Uh, there's also some like, micro lenders, like non-traditional banks that you can find online that are taking applications. So there, there, there's several options. I would probably start with your bank first. I think that the process is simpler since you already have an account set up with them. They already have your information. Maybe you, you have a, a banker that you typically work with. I would start there. Um, so that's, that's the number one takeaway from this go to your bank start the process um the other thing you're gonna have to have is your 2019 tax return so if you haven't filed your 2019 tax return i would make that a priority get that done because that's what they're basing uh your your ppp amount on it's based on your 2019 schedule c which is part of your personal tax return uh, so if you haven't gotten that done, do that immediately so you can have that ready because um, I know the bank's going to ask for that part of the application process. Um, so uh, I'll share my screen with you. So the way it works, so typically with a small business, it's called the Paycheck Protection Program. So it's based on your payroll. Um, but if you're independent, if you're a sole proprietor, you probably don't have payroll. You're not paying. You're you're, you're probably not paying other uh, other employees. Uh, you're not receiving W two income. Um, so this is why it's based on your uh, uh, your 2019 tax return. So I'm going to share my screen. Well, never mind. It's not letting me share my screen. Um, so schedule schedule c is the schedule that it's based on so um let's see okay i think it's letting me show my screen now okay all right so this is schedule c this is going to be uh this is where you report your income and expenses from your business or your 1099 income, wherever your income comes from uh, as a sole proprietor, this, this is where you report it. Um, so if you have your 2019 tax return done already, you can go to here. Um, this is gonna be within there um, and you can take a look and see how much you're eligible for. So this is the schedule, schedule C. Um, so you're reporting your income here. This is your gross income, like the total of the 1099s you got, the total gross income you received. It goes in this part one section. Uh, part two, these are all your business expenses. Um, all of these may or may not apply to you, but these are, your, these are the basic categories of um, your expenses. 
So line 31, this is the net. So your income from the from the top section, part one, your ex minus your total expenses in part two to get your net income on line 31. So this is your net profit or loss. This is the number that your PPP amount will be based on. So, um, so the way it works is it's two and a half times your monthly payroll. So since you don't have payroll, this is the number um, they're using, it's line 31. So uh, basically the way that works is this is gonna be your annual payroll number for the purposes of PPP. So um, let's say this number was 50,000. So your net for the year, this, just for example, is 50,000. So you're gonna take that and divide it by 12 to get your average. That'd be your average monthly would be the 50,000 divided by 12, that's 4167. And you're gonna multiply that number times two and a half. And that's gonna be 10,417. So that would be the, the amount that you're eligible for. Uh, so this line 31, um, divided by 12 times two and a half, that gets you to what you're eligible to, to receive. Um, so, so how is it forgiven? So, you know, this is technically a loan. So you go through the process with the bank, you get the 10,417. Um, so the way it works from that point is you have eight weeks to spend the money on the eligible expenses. Well, the, the, the law says you have to spend that on payroll. Um, since you are, since you don't have payroll, um, how does that work? Um, well, they clarified, they said that whatever you spent money on in 2019, that's what you're allowed to spend the PPP funds on. So you take your 2019 tax return and you look at all these expense categories. Wherever you had expenses last year in 2019, that's what you can spend the money on. So if you had advertising expenses in this line, then you're allowed to spend the PPP funds on expenses, on uh, advertising expenses. Uh, if you had repairs and maintenance, you had supplies, whatever you reported on your 2019 tax return, that's what you're allowed to, to spend the PPP funds on. Um, so if you had zero utilities last year, then you can't spend this year the, the PPP funds on utilities. It has to be um, in the categories that you actually spent funds uh, in 2019. So. Um, the, the process to get it, get the loan forgiven after the eight week period is over, um, the eight weeks starts when you, um, and you first receive the funds. So when you apply, the bank approves it, you get the funds, say on Friday, then you have eight weeks on Friday to spend the funds. After that eight week period, then you're gonna go back to the bank and apply for forgiveness. Uh, they basically they just released the form a couple days ago. It's a pretty long form. Um, but you'll, you'll complete that form, um, submit it to the bank. They'll probably ask for you to provide some uh, documentation to prove that you spent the funds appropriately. Um, so I would save, save your receipts, save the 1099s you've received, save any invoices, have your bank statements available, um, anything you can keep to substantiate how you spent the funds. Just, keep all your receipts. Um, you know, I think they're gonna, they're gonna do random audits. They've said that anyone that receives over $2 million automatically gets an audit. I doubt that you know, anyone, uh, doubt that applies to anyone here, but uh, if you receive less than $2 million, there's, there's gonna be some random audits. So just keep all your receipts, just like you would keep your receipts for filing your tax return, keep all your receipts, keep all your bank statements. Um, 
that's that's a basic rundown. I don't, Shane. I don't know if you want to add anything to that before uh, we start. At, yes, I definitely. Would like to. But yeah, absolutely. So first, I would just um, thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate you joining this overview, um, running down the basic. For everyone, I just want you, everyone to clearly um, understand, even if you don't identify as a, identify yourself as a small business. Again, if you're a gig worker, um, self-employed, sole proprietor, independent contractor, and you receive 1099s, the IRS view you as a bit small business by virtue of you completing and filing a Schedule C on your taxes. Um, use an example that Aaron mentioned in terms of the $50,000. Um, if you're on line 31 of that Schedule C, um, if, you're, if it's $50,000, the maximum amount that you will qualify for, I just really want to reiterate this point, is um, what it was it again? It was, uh, uh, it was 10,000. I'm sorry, I'm doing the math right here. 10,000, like 417, I think. Yeah, so it would be $10,416. Keep in mind, that is the maximum amount that you qualify for. 75% of that amount is what is considered has to be spent on payroll. The other 25% has to be spent on qualifying costs. Aaron, I think I have a, dis, a different understanding than what you stated in terms of how that 25% has to be spent. From my understanding, that money has to be spent on rent, utilities, mortgage interest. Utilities can include, obviously, like your energy bill, if you have a home business, or at your studio or office. That also can include internet and phone. Um, for most people, I would recommend, if, um, if, you, if, you, if you feel like your utility, rent, mortgage expenses, if you have that, doesn't equal to that what that 25% amount would be, in this example, that would be um, uh, it was that that would be two twenty six hundred dollars. I would bypass applying for the full amount and only apply for um, the seven eight hundred dollars, which is seventy five percent of that um, ten thousand four hundred and sixteen. Again, I'm gonna just restate that so everyone is clear. There's the full amount that you can apply for twenty five, of which has to be on approved costs. Those approved costs are directly related to rent, utilities, mortgage interest. You also have another option to apply for 75% of that amount, which you would spend on payroll. And many independent contractors and sole proprietors, self-employed folks didn't realize that they qualify to apply for PPP because it was called the, it's called the payroll protection program. And most people are like, well, I don't have payroll, I don't have staff. And oftentimes we forget to include ourselves in that. We have to no, hear So as such, um, for using that, uh, again, that $10,416 amount, if you only apply for 75% of that, um, you will be looking at um, receiving a loan of $7,812. There are several um, options to submit an application for PPP. Um, you can apply through Square, PayPal, um, Inuit, Cabbage, um, some of those may actually move faster than your bank. Um, specifically in my example for myself in terms of my independent contract work, I applied through Square and within six days I was approved. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, five days I, everything was verified, the sixth day I was approved. A friend of mine two days ago applied on Monday through QuickBooks and she was approved yesterday. So some um, platforms are able to move faster than others. Again, if you feel like um, the, the, the biggest takeaway I would strongly stress is that 75% of the loan has to be paid on payroll. If you feel like you can't justify um, spending the $2,600 using that $50,000 example on rent, utilities, or market expenses, then I would not recommend opting to go for the full amount. Um, because you have to show that you, that's a cost that you incur over the course of eight weeks. Um, and in terms of the forgiveness part and also how do you document, Erin, I don't know if you have some other ideas on this, but how to document that you're actually paying yourself. Again, I recommend if you apply for the PPP funding, many of you definitely qualify for it. I recommend creating a separate bank account, a separate checking account, like set up an online checking account 
So if you do apply and get approved, that money from the SBA will go directly to that checking account. And that way it wouldn't go to your personal checking account with all of your, you know, uh, restaurant, grocery, personal expenses, or you want things to be pretty clear. So when you're reporting back to the SBA to have the loan forgiven, you want it to be very clear cut and you don't want to have it mixed up with your personal checking account, having a separate checking account established would help to be able to um, communicate and show how you paid yourself. And Aaron, I don't know if you have any other thoughts about how to, for um, folks to show how they're paying themselves outside of creating a separate bank account or setting up a payroll system through like Square or PayPal. Um, that has been, that was recommended to me. I chose not to do that since the money is gonna come directly from the SBA and deposit into a bank account. And you decide what bank account it will be, the funds will be deposited into. The other last thing, um, I'm sorry, Erin, I asked you a question and I'm still talking. The last thing I just wanna stress is you cannot receive unemployment and PPP at the same time. Now, if you are receiving unemployment and you wanna go after the PPP funds, you may have to stop the unemployment. Um, but in some cases, um, you just have to choose one or the other. And for some people, unemployment may be a better strategy if their net income on line 31 or the Schedule C is really low especially if it's under, I would say, 30,000. Um, but you, I think definitely recommend doing a map to see how you will fare out. One thing to remember too, unemployment is taxable income and the PPP is not. Um, and the PPP can be forgiven if you spend the money as identified through the CARES Act, where 75% of those funds are going towards payroll. And by payroll, I'm referring to you paying yourself. Yeah, I mean, just another thought on that. If you, so if you don't, if you're not, if you're not able to utilize all the funds, um, it's basically, it becomes a an, a loan at 1% interest. So, you know, if you can't utilize all the funds, it's a 1% it's a interest loan that you have to pay back over two years. So, you know, I, I don't think it hurts to take the whole thing, but just be prepared um to repay that um but, but you know I, I think for you know you're i agree that you know it does say 75 percent of the funds is supposed to be spent on payroll but if you don't have payroll um you know they've sort of adjusted that for self-employed people to say owner compensation replacement. So, you know, that's, to me, that's pretty, owner compensation replacement is pretty broad. I mean, that's basically, it's giving you, you as the owner those funds, so. Um, I guess I see there's a lot of questions. I guess we can start. You want me to read them for you, Aaron, or do you just want to go ahead? I want to take a look and read. Um, it doesn't matter. I can just read them real quick, I guess. Um, so first one, what if, what if I was not required to file a tax return due to low income, then I would file one anyway. I mean, you, they're not gonna, you got, you have to have something to base this on. Um, so yeah, I would go ahead and file one. And if you didn't have any income, then you're, you're not going to qualify. You know, so it's because it's based on your net income. So if you're if you didn't have any income, you're not going to qualify. If you did have some income, then yeah, you should probably file a tax return anyway. But yeah, go ahead and file it. Um. Yeah, someone said yeah, you should probably file for unemployment. That's true. Um, what if your net is very low, like less than two thousand? Will they turn you away? No. I mean, it's going to be, you're just going to get a small amount, but there's no, there's a cap on how much one business can get. It's 2 million, but there's no floor. So if yours is $500, then you'll get $500. Um, when did they I clarify? Erin, I would just add for Square, if you, anyone applied through Square, the minimum 
ha amount has to be about is a thousand dollars in terms of your net when you schedule C. Okay. Uh, in terms of applying through Square, and they're trying to okay. catch a lot of self-employed like um, folks with um, you know amounts that are like sixty thousand and under. Okay. So when did they clarify that you can use PVP on anything you wrote off on your 2019 return? Um, so this is part of, um, it came out on April 20th. Um, it's treasury.gov. I can share that with you. Um, so they've been issuing lots of new rules and regulations. And one of the big things that, that most people were confused about was the original law said it's two and a half times your, your payroll. Well, if you're self-employed, you probably don't have payroll. So what do you do? So that's when they clarified um, that it's based, that payroll for a self-employed person is that net income. So if you're required to spend the money on payroll, and the definition of payroll is your net income, then those expenses that you had in the previous year are allowable. So let me, sh oh, I can't share my screen again. Um, I'm gonna read directly from the. You should be able to share, Aaron. Okay. Okay, so this is from treasury. Treasury.gov has a link to, if you go to treasury.gov, they have a red bar at the top of the screen there's a which is a link to all the rules all the forms everything is on, on one page so this is this is there if anyone wants to look at it um so one april 20th this basically gets in all the details about how self-employed people um can apply um so basically right here it says you must have claimed or be entitled to claim a deduction for such expenses on your 2019 form 1040 Schedule C for them to be permissible use during the eight week period following the first disbursement of the loan. For example, if you did not claim or are not entitled to claim utility expenses, you cannot use that uh, for this. So, I mean, that's basically getting into the uh, owner compensation or owner compensation replacement. See right here, the proceeds of a PPP loan are to be used for the following owner compensation replacement calculated based on 2019 net profit. So, um, you know, I, I think, so that portion, that 75%, you know, that's, that's based on net profit. So you can, you know, there's, I don't see that there's any restriction on how you use that as long as you use it. Um, on what you use in 2019, if they define it right here. Now this is, and this is just for self-employed people. If you're, you know, if you're with a small business or a nonprofit, um, you have to use it on payroll. So this doesn't apply to everyone. This is just for self-employed, sole proprietors, um, if you're if you're a small business or nonprofit that has employees, then you have to spend it on payroll. Let's see. Would I be able to apply if I have one W two and three ten nine ons? I don't formally normally follow Schedule C. Yeah, if you if you get a ten ninety nine, then you should be following a Schedule C. So yeah, even if you have a W two. And you also have 1099s on top of that. Yes, you're eligible. Um, I've applied through my bank and Smart Biz Loans. The application is being reviewed, but that was four weeks ago. How long should it take? Yeah, it definitely should not take four weeks. Definitely not. Um, I would try to follow up with someone there. If not, I would go to a different bank. Um, you know, it's it shouldn't take more than a week. Less than that, typically. Uh, so yes, just I agree. The, if you go through one of the online platforms, it could be two days. It could be up to six days. Um, it, it shouldn't take, again, it shouldn't take longer than a week. I agree with Aaron 100%. Um, 
I also just, I don't know if you know what the current numbers are, but last week there was $120 billion left in PPP funding. As of Monday, it was down to um, $75 billion. So the sooner people apply, I would say the better. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just go to the bank, bring my tax return, and let them know I want to apply for the PPP loan. Um, yeah, I would, you know, I don't know what banks, branches are actually open right now um some banks are doing it through an online portal some are uh you know doing it through email um i would get in touch with someone there uh, i would try to give them a call or send an email or go to the website because uh, i don't know who all even has their branches open at this point but yeah i mean you're gonna have to fill out a form you're gonna have to submit your tax return um, but yeah, I mean, that's the main thing you need to have ready is your tax return. Is there a high rate of forgiveness? Um, we don't know yet. I mean, the, the form just came out to apply for forgiveness. I don't think we've hit the eight week mark yet for the, the initial loan, but we're right there at it. So that process really hasn't started yet. Um, but I, I would expect there to be, as long, you know, as long as you, Follow the rules. I don't think there's any reason to, to have yours not forgiven. So if you apply for the lesser amount, do they base the 75% on the applied for amount instead of the fully qualifying amount? Uh, so I guess, are you saying if you're eligible for more, but you take less, um, yeah, I think it's, I don't know. Um, yeah, I would say take the full thing and if you have to pay it back, you have to pay it back. Um, I don't think that would hurt. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I would have to get back to you on that. I'm guessing it's 75% of what you receive, but I don't know that for sure. So I would just say, um, I mean, Aaron, you're just saying just pay it back. I would recommend if you don't want to have to pay anything back, I would just say go for the 75%, go for the lesson amount. If you're worried about having to pay something back. The other thing to remember is paying it back is only 1%. And so it's very low interest um, that you would be looking at. And so if you go for the full, using our $50,000 example, you go for the full $10,416, um, 25% of that is $2,600. And you would just be looking at paying 1% interest on that amount. But you just have to show that the other 75% was spent on payroll, which is paying yourself. I know most folks I know don't want to have to pay anything back. They want it to be a grant. And if you, if you wanted to think about it in that regards, I would just go for the lesser amount. When you apply to Square, for example, which I'm very familiar with, they give you the option to choose which one you want to apply for. Also, as Aaron has noted and stressed, the rules for organizations a little clear cut for self-employed folks is a slightly little murky in terms of what that process is going to look like in terms of how it would become forgivable. But one thing I would strongly recommend is that people create a separate bank account to receive the funds. So when you're reporting back, it's not messy at all. And you can show proof that you paid yourself. Whether you pay yourself every two weeks or once a month, but you wanna be able to show a transfer from one account to the next that reflects what paying yourself would look like. Yeah, and I would, I would advise that, to, I, I pretty much advise that to all my clients anyway, is if you have a separate business account from your personal account, it just, it makes, life easier, tax time, you don't have to go through your bank statements and figure out what's business, what's personal. Uh, I think it's a good idea in general to separate those two. Um, is using Schedule e C E Z sufficient? So there's no longer a Schedule C E Z. That was discontinued after 2018. So 2019 Schedule C E Z does not exist. So. Um, does paying yourself mean you transfer funds from one checking account to another? Um, 
for this, I guess, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's no requirement as a sole proprietor to have payroll, like have an official payroll set up where you're paying yourself and giving yourself a W-2. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any, any other way to do it. How, do we, how long do we have to apply? So you have until the money runs out. So basically Congress allotted a set amount of money and when that money runs out, it's, it's over. So, you know, it's, it's been going on for a couple months now. So I, I think I would, I would do this soon. Uh, best practice for paying yourself. Yeah, I think the only thing you can do is, uh, you know, like Shana said, if you have have a separate account for your business versus your personal, you know, um, if not, write yourself a check and cash it. Once you qualify, once you qualify, um. I would say during the eight week period that you have PPP, you would not qualify for unemployment. So, uh, you know, once you receive the funding on the PPP, you're no longer able to receive funds from uh, unemployment. I think after that eight week period is up, then you could probably reapply for unemployment, but you definitely can't do both. It's not that you can't have both at the same time. Okay, question about numbers to get to the PPP figure. I use my square to see my t-shirts, but I do not understand how one can use this platform to apply. So if you're using square, uh, and Shana might be able to answer this, I think there's a, if you log in to your like back end account of square, not through your like point of sale, but you know, when you look up your reports and all, there's, there should be a link in there. Yes, right, if you Gina? just yeah, if you go to the Square website right now, it's listed on the website, and you could click it and you can log in. Um, they've also been sending out emails to all of the folks who are signed up with them about how to apply. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. You can log in or go straight to the Square Square Up website. Also, I just shared the link on the chat related to the question about unemployment versus PPP. It's a really great um, article to help to walk people through which one makes works better for them. Um, for some folks, going through unemployment may be better because um, what they receive through the PPP funding may be really low and may not be worth it. What they will receive more through unemployment, especially as it relates to the federal um, unemployment right now uh, with the $600 a week. Um, so I would recommend, strongly recommend looking at the link that I just shared to calculate which one would work better for you. So are LLCs eligible? Yes. So if you, if you are an LLC or if you have an LLC set up and you are the only owner of that LLC, then you're considered a sole proprietor. You file a schedule C the same, same uh, as if you just were an individual that got a 1099. So mm -hmm. if you're an LLC or you have an LLC, and you're the only owner, it's the same thing, same process. Now, if you have partners, if you're an LLC or you have an LLC that has multiple partners um, or just one other partner besides you, then that entity would file for the PPP. It's a little bit, a little different process that the entity itself would apply and you would not apply personally. Um, it's that you basically can receive uh, the same the same system for for calculating how much you would receive, uh, but it's under the business and not you personally. Um, you know, you if you have partners, you file a separate tax return. You don't file a Schedule C. You you file what's called a 1065. Um, so it'd be based on net income from that. Uh, so yeah, you're still eligible for sure. Um, 
if you haven't filed for 2019, can you apply for PPP based off of your 2018 taxes? No, uh, you have to use uh, 2019. They clarify that in the uh, the rules that I mentioned earlier that came out on April 20th. Um, it has to be based on 2019 net income. Chase has taken several weeks to respond. Can an LLC do a second application with a different bank for faster reply, like trial with Fidelity? Um, I would say yes. I would let Fidelity know that you already have an application pending with Chase, though. So I'll just be upfront with them. Um, you know, I, my company personally, we follow through Chase. Um, they're a little frustrating because they, there's basically a portal that you submit everything through and there's no one to talk to, no one to give you updates. So you're kind of just waiting. So yeah, we were concerned. It took us a few weeks, uh, but ours eventually did come through. But yeah, if you're concerned, um, yeah, I would try another bank, but just let them know that you have another application pending. Cause I think you know, they're having the, the banks are accessing the funds through SBA. And so if both banks actually took out a loan for you through SBA at the same time, I think that could be an issue. So let them know that there is another application. I think it's fine to, to try with a different bank. I'm a contracted artist and also have a state nonprofit performing company. Do I apply as an individual or for my company? Um, so if you have a nonprofit, then the nonprofit itself can apply. Mm -hmm. and then you personally can apply yes yeah so that's because it's two, that's two different things like yeah. the nonprofit should be technically completely independent of you maybe you get paid maybe you're uh you know are contracted by that nonprofit to do some work maybe you receive some income from it but it's a totally independent entity from you personally so yeah both of you should apply for it uh, sole proprietors on unemployment, can you pause unemployment for the eight weeks of the loan if approved and then resume unemployment afterwards? I think, yeah, you definitely can't do both at the same time, but, you know, because when you get the PPP, then you have income now, so you can't apply for unemployment. Then after the eight weeks, as long as you still have no income, I think you can reapply for unemployment at that point. So I don't, I don't see any issue with that. Just can't have both at the same time. I applied six weeks ago through a third party and they gave me bad advice in how to fill out and are now not responsible. Is it fraudulent to send, submit a second application? No. It, as long as you haven't accepted um, a PPP loan from that bank, then you can, uh, you, yeah, I would, if they're not responsive, if they're not getting back to you, I would try someone else. You cannot have two loans. Though. You cannot have two PPP loans so that's definitely against the law to have two actual loans but um you know having two applications i don't think is a big deal i would just again let the you apply with a different bank let them know that you have another one pending so that you know they both don't end up submitting for you at the same time uh, let's see. What if you've been able to work during this time, but at a much less rate, do you still qualify? Yeah, there, there's no requirement. This is not like unemployment. Unemployment, you have to be unemployed. You have to be out of work. There's no requirement that you be out of work to get the PPP. So yeah, you just have to say that this has negatively impacted you. So you have to certify that you need this money to continue your business. You think you're going to need it to in the future because you're, you know, you could potentially have lost work in the future, but it doesn't, you don't have to say that I have no work. You know, you just have to say that you, you do need it. So there's no issue with continuing to have, have income. Unemployment is a different story. You, you have to say you have no income for unemployment, but this is, yeah. Is there a maximum amount that you can pay yourself? Uh, well, 
the Wallace said 75% has to go to payroll. Um, but it says up to seven, or it says at least 75%. It doesn't say uh, a maximum of 75%. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a cap on, on that at all. So, Aaron, I'm confused okay. by that response. Um, because okay. it's a, if at least 75% at least have to be spent on payroll, but if yes. someone apply for the full amount and 25% of that has to be spent on rent, utilities, mortgage, interest, how is it? I'm That's not how I understand it. I understand that you must spend at least 75% on payroll, mm -hmm. but there's no, there's no limit. You don't have to spend the other 25% on, on, uh, rent utilities. I think the, I think the idea was. Oh, is it a matter, a matter that you can't spend if you do spend on rent utilities, market interest, it can't exceed 25%. Is that the issue? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It's the other way around. So if you're, if you're going to use this funds to cover your rent and utilities, then you can only spend up to 25% of that money on rent utilities. Um, you know, you, if your rent and utilities end up being 50% of the PPP, then you have to use other funds to cover the remainder of your rent. So um, yeah, it, I think the idea was to, you know, since this is the Paycheck Protection Program, it was supposed to be, we want majority of this money to go to paying people. Um, we'll, we'll let you spend a small portion of it, 25% on your rent and utilities, but we want most of this to get to go to people. And so if you spend 100% of it on payroll, then I think that's fine. You just can't spend more than 25% on your rent and utilities. So in that regards, if people, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull back from what I stated early, earlier. Based on that, uh, folks, I mean, given that, I would recommend people just go for a full amount. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Now, you know, if you're, if you're a, a small business with employees and you've had to lay people off and, you know, that's maybe a different scenario that, you know, you don't, you can't rehire them or whatnot. But yeah, if you're an individual sole proprietor, I would say take the whole thing. Okay. Let's see. Um, Yeah, someone said a minimum of 75% must be spent on payroll. Yeah, it's a minimum. Uh, okay, my sole proprietor business just got a big EIDL deposit. No PPP yet. Are these rules the same for the EIDL? No. So the EIDL, that's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan for those who don't aren't aware of that program. It's a different program. It's done directly through the SBA. There's two, there's two pieces to the EIDL. One is a, is a grant. So the SBA is giving $1,000 per employee in the form of a grant. So no restrictions on that. Um, spend that however you'd like. Uh, the other part of the EIDL is the loan. So I'm not sure if you're, uh, the person who asked this is referring to the loan or the, uh, the grant portion, but there are, there are not the same restrictions on, on the EIDL. The EIDL, EIDL is a loan, so you have to pay that back. There's no forgiveness on that. Um, the only requirement is that you can't spend the PPP and the EIDL for the same purpose. So if you're gonna spend uh, the, the PPP on payroll or paying yourself for the next eight weeks, then you couldn't also use the EIDL to pay yourself during that same eight weeks. You have to spend that on something else that's business related or spend that on the period after your eight weeks is over. Um, so the rules aren't the same. The EIDL is a loan, so they're a little less, you, know, you have to pay that back no matter what. So they're not as, you know, strict about how you spend that money. You just can't use it for the same thing as a PPP. Um, 
um, let's see. Okay, for example, if after all expenses, your number 31 is $20,000, I'll plot the numbers that I think are the ones you noted then. Bigger once about about 12 times two and a half equals 4166. Is that correct? So you had 20,000 divided by 12 times 2.5. Yeah, $4,167. If, if your net income on line 31 was $20,000, then you're, um, you're eligible to receive $4,166. It'd be 20,000 divided by 12 times two and a half. Most challenging for me is that rent is nearly $1,000 per month. How can this loan be applied? Because I do not have any work until early October. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what you're eligible for under this. I mean, there's other programs. I would check into the EIDL. Um, you know, it's a loan that has to be repaid, uh, but uh, it's another option that's out there. I would apply for unemployment also once, you know, after the, after you've exhausted the 4167, I would apply for unemployment um, through, I think it expires in July, but as of now, you can get $600 a week plus the you know the states portion so it's like 850 a week that you can get on unemployment so that's another option but yeah this is this is how the ppp works um let's see um seem to recall reading the eid l offsets ppp or ppp offsets eidl but one is deducted from eligibility for the other correct yeah, so if you get the grant, not the portion of the IDL that's alone, but the grant portion, that has to be refinanced into your PPP. So you can't, you're right, you can't get both. That would offset what you're able to get through the PPP. Um, you have to pay the PPP back. I got denied from the SBA, got EIDL and PPP. What do I have to pay back? As long as you spend the PPP appropriately over the eight week period and you apply for forgiveness, you do not have to pay the PPP back. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have to apply for forgiveness at the end of the eight weeks, but as long as you follow the rules, then yeah, there's no reason you have to pay it back. Now the EIDL loan portion, yeah, that's a 30 year loan that, uh, you know, 3.75% interest that you have to pay back. Uh, I'm a professor and artist. I lost, I have not lost my job. I was supposed to have a big show this year. I'm gonna be hit very hard because I've lost that income. I, however, have never, set up a sole proprietorship. I have always just had payments go directly to me. Can I still apply? Yeah, if you had payments going directly to you, you didn't have like an actual entity set up like an LLC to the Secretary of State, you still should have been filing a Schedule C. So if, if, any, if you're paid um, directly to you personally and not through like a W-2, then yeah, you should be filing a Schedule C. So that's, uh, you know, you don't have to have an LLC set up. You just have to, uh, you know, have a, uh, have filed that Schedule C. And if you're being paid directly, then yeah, you should have been filing a Schedule C. Yeah, I've been filing Schedule C, so it should just go through that. Correct. That's fine. yeah. Yeah, I just didn't understand if that was okay. Yeah, no, as long you don't have to have like an actual entity filed with the state. No, as long as you're you're recording that income on Schedule C. That's what they're going to base it on. So. Okay. And is it based on last year's directly? 2019. Yep. They're basing it on 2019 tax returns. So, yeah, if you haven't filed that yet, then I would go ahead and, and get that done because that's what they're going to base it on. I have it. Just the lowest it's been in 10 years. And yeah. then I have a huge show coming up this year. Yeah, I know. I think that's just, that's bad. 
that's bad luck. You know, I've had some other people say, well, you know, I was partially shut down in 2019. I had this or that that happened in 2019. I think that's just, that's bad luck. They didn't really give us any options on that. Like it just has to be based on 2019. Um, let's see. What is EIDL? I can get into the state unemployment portal on the state site. Um, so the EIDL, it stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loans. It's done directly through the SBA. So you apply on the SBA's website, it's sba.gov. Um, it's pretty simple. They don't ask a lot of questions. It's some basic information. Um, after you fill out the application, they'll send you an email uh, asking you to create an account. And once you create that account, they'll offer you a loan. Um, at that point, you can either accept it or not accept it or accept a portion of it. Um, but yeah, it's a good option. It's just a, it's a loan. You have to repay it. Now, most people are focused on the PPP because it's potentially forgivable. Um, but the EIDL is definitely another option, uh, you know, if, okay. Um, Hey, um, so I want to just, yeah. mention, um, I can't find that portal on the state government side. I spent about, uh, close to two, three hours looking for it, uh, about 10 days ago. And just before that. Governor Bell Edwards had announced in his speaking, the governor speaking weekly on WWNO, that the portal site for the state government for handling gig slash freelance artist workers for that unemployment part of it was not totally functioning. So I'm really confused. Is that site functioning? I cannot seem to find it. If you can provide so, me a link, that would be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So for the unemployment through the state, that's going to be laworks.net. Yeah, so it's laworks.net. That's the website for Louisiana unemployment. Um, I'm not sure if it's down or not. I think it's, I think it's been working. Um, you know, I know they're overwhelmed, uh, you know, but it's it's definitely laworks.net. That's the state's website to apply for unemployment. Uh, the EIDL, the loan program, that's through the SBA, and that's just sba.gov. So those are two places for that. The PPP is through your bank, so you know contact your bank. But the other two, laworks.net and then sba.gov. Relationship that is it the CARES Act for the for the unemployment that you apply where you're receiving six hundred dollars is that the one because I believe that for Louisiana State the the amount that you would receive for unemployment would be something like two hundred dollars or maybe less than that is that correct yeah, so yes that's correct so the LA so Louisiana unemployment typically is is two fifty a week or two forty seven to be exact what the CARES Act did was they gave all the states an extra $600 per week. So you still apply through Louisiana to get the extra 600. There's not a different place. The CARES Act just basically guaranteed all the states the extra $600. So you apply in the same spot, you're eligible for 847 now. Wow, that's really helpful. Okay, that was yeah. something that was totally unclear to me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's the same, same place. You apply for unemployment. Uh, it's all done. You know, there's not a federal unemployment office. It's, that's all done to the state. So what the CARES Act did was they just gave the money to the states to administer the extra 600. So you get whatever the state normally gives, which is 247 plus the extra 600. Okay. Um, I think that's. Um, I think that's it. There's one comment. Um, one last comment that the. It seems like the. Uh, EIDL is being limited to um, agricultural businesses at this time. Okay. Um, yeah, I hadn't heard that, but that, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I knew that at one point the EIDL was sort of running out of funds. So, yeah, that could be true. We are at, a, we are at time. Um, 
first of all, thank you again for just making yourself available um, to, to answer questions over the course of the hour and give a presentation. Thank you, Shana, uh, for uh, seeding the idea for this session and also for, the, for answering questions and providing information. This session has been recorded and we will make it available um, to everyone. I, I will send um, a copy of this um, to Shane and Bob to share over the Creative Response Network. Um, but if you have any other questions, um, you, you can uh, um, type them here. I'm gonna leave the chat open just for a little bit. Um, type them here and, and I'll try to record those and if there's any way where we can answer. We, we And that's answered at a, at, at a time after this session. Also, I would just say, um, depending on the, based on the response, we might do another one or two more of these to help answer a lot of the questions that people may have. Thanks. Jay, thank you very much. This has been really, really helpful. I greatly appreciate it. Yep, thank you guys. Okay, guys.